Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, what a wonderful day, beautiful day to come together to study your word. I pray, Lord, you open the pages of the scriptures to every one of us in Jesus' name. Bless everyone here. And we pray that this word will never leave us in Jesus' name. Where there is confusion, oh Lord, I pray you'll bring understanding. Where there are things in our lives and our families who wondered, why did this happen? Why did this happen? Give us solution to every problem in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, we we'll still carry on with the revival. The spirit of revival will be upon everyone. You'll break every yoke in everybody's life. And any plan of any herald against any child of God here, send supernatural help from heaven and deliver your people in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. We come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. In this Acts of the Apostles chapter 12, you'll find how the chapter begins. Look at chapter 12, verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex, to torture, to torment, to destroy, to kill certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, the time of the Passover. And when he had apprehended him, that means when he had arrested him, that means when he had taken him, he put him in prison. And he delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in the prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. God will answer the prayer of the church. The enemy's opposition against the spread of God's saving truth, of the gospel, of the word of God, was resumed by Herod. He stretched forth his hand, and he took one of the pillars of the church. He took one of the great men, preachers, pioneers in the church. And he killed him. After killing him, he straight forth his son again to the second one. That is Peter. And he wanted to destroy Peter also. But he put him in the prison because he saw that the Passover of the Jews, that Passover was coming. And because of that Passover, if he had killed Peter at that time, he will be unpopular. And you need to understand that Herod was a great politician. All he wanted was to be popular with the people. And when he killed James, he saw that pleased the children of Israel, the Jews. Why did it please the Jews? Because these were the people spreading the gospel. They were preaching Christ and people were getting saved. They were leaving the old traditional religion that does nobody any good. And they were coming to Jesus Christ, the Savior. Jesus Christ, the Lord. And he called them earlier. He said, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. And you intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Now they warned him. They said, lest they shall spread. Everybody must be keep quiet. Don't preach this word again. But they kept on preaching and preaching and preaching the word. That's the reason why when he took James and he killed him, that pleased the people. And that pleased Herod himself. You want to know something number one? There are things that please people that do not please God. And there are people that think if they please themselves, like Herod pleased himself, and also please the people, they think that that will be wonderful, that will be all right. Because pleasing Herod himself and pleasing the people, that might please God. But the Bible says, no, it doesn't please God. The ways of God are higher than the ways of man. And the things that please man, they do not necessarily please the Lord. Notice that in your life, if you try to please this and please this and please that, and you think you are pleasing God, you might not be pleasing God. And eventually we're told that the church began to pray. 
actor Peter was kept in the prison and when Peter was kept in the prison you see what happened he wasn't panicking he wasn't anxious he wasn't worried and they were told that he kept him it was that's what we call maximum security prison the soldiers were there at the gate the soldiers were there at the door and the soldiers were changed unto him and Herod was so sure he had provided maximum security in the prison and that nothing could get out Peter from there when we read the story you will see what happened an angel came up from heaven those angels are still there and when they need to come and deliver any of the children of God those angels are sent and deliver and then they smote him on the side and got him up and all the chains fell off like all your chains are falling off already and then he said get up and put on your sandals and put on your clothes he put on his clothes and then he came out and when he got to the next door the iron door that even if you escaped from those soldiers and you escape from those chains when you go to this door how are you going to open the door because if those soldiers wake up all of a sudden they say where is peter where is peter they'll be after him but then the door opened of its own accord and then they go to the iron gate that leads into the city and did that gate open you know that all gates are open before you this year because the power of the Lord is there, the presence of the Lord is there. And because of that presence of the Lord, every door that Herod has raised up to imprison you, incarcerate you, confine you, all those doors, they are opened in Jesus' name. And then Peter thought, where will he go? Now he's delivered. It was in the dead of the night. And so he said, I'll go to the house of uh, the mother of John Mark and that was the place they were praying for him you see God directs and guides the steps of the children of God he knocked at the door when he knocked at the door there was a maid there Rhoda came to the door and when she heard the voice she was so surprised God answers prayer I'm here to tell you tonight God answers prayer and then she went back in to say, the Lord has answered her prayer. Peter is right there. And Peter is wondering, where is this girl? Open the door, let me come in. And then they said, no, it's not Peter. And she kept on affirming it's Peter. And so they said, thou art mad. Something has gone wrong because Peter is in the prison. You see, why were they praying if they didn't know that God will answer prayer? You know what I want to tell you? God answers your prayer even when your faith is weak. When you think, can God answer that prayer? It would be a great surprise and shocking, a shocking statement to me if God answered my prayer. But he answers the prayer of weak people. You say, I'm weak. I don't know how to pray much. Even if that answer came, I wouldn't know that that was the answer. But he answers the prayer of all his people. Eventually, because Rhoda kept on affirming, he opened the door. They were so surprised and Peter said, hush, don't shout because if you shout, you'll wake up the people around and then they know that Peter is out of the prison and then he considered he went to another place and then look at the verse 24 there, it says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. What Herod was trying to prevent, what Herod was saying, this will not happen and that's exactly what happened. The Lord reversed all the intention of Herod, all the plan of Herod, all the things, all the purpose of Herod. The Lord reversed everything. The word of God grew and multiplied. All the intentions of Herod, of Haman, of Satan, of the devil in your life, they are reversed in Jesus' name. We're going to study this under three perspectives. The real topic is divine intervention after disciples intercession divine intervention after disciples intercession now number one severe persecution and plot against the pioneers severe persecution and plot against the pioneers and then point number two supernatural preservation of the preacher through prayer the supernatural preservation of the preacher through prayer he'll preserve your life he'll preserve your family he'll preserve the church of the living god in jesus name 
point number three, sinner's punishment and the prevalence of preaching. Sinner's punishment and the prevalence of preaching. We're coming to chapter, chapter 12 of the Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at verses 1 and 2 again. Now about that time, what time? That was the time that Barnabas and uh, Saul the two could leave to Jerusalem. You read that in the last verse of um, that of the previous chapter. And around that time was when persecution rose up against the church. Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain in the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Wait a minute there. He killed James. The brother of John with the sword. Sometimes when somebody you know to be a real believer, that fellow dies. You wonder. Sometimes when you see a person fighting for the Lord, a person who is really sold out to the Lord, consecrated to the Lord, who has left everything and is serving the Lord, when that person dies, you ask yourself, but why? I know that brother. I know that sister. If anybody should die at all, it shouldn't be that brother. It shouldn't be that sister. The question is, why did God permit James to die at this time? I'm looking with you from Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. And we're looking at verses 1 and 2. It says, The righteous perisheth, and no man lays it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, and none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. God is a wise God, and God is a merciful God. He knows the future, and because he knows the future, he takes away the righteous man from the evil to come. And so you understand why those things happen. Like we're coming back to we're coming back to Acts of the Apostles, and we're now in chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 1 again. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 1. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church, and he killed. James the brother of John and he killed James the brother of John and there were quite a number of people there if we're thinking of the apostles there were 12 apostles and these were pillars of panniers in the church why James in particular in Mark chapter 10 Mark chapter 10 and we're reading now from verse 35 Mark chapter 10 verse 35 we have a great instruction from here. And um, in the verse 35, Mark 10, verse 30, are you there? What's the first name there? And James and John, notice that. And James and John were told, the sons of Zebedee, they come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? And they said unto him, Grant unto us that we may sit one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what she asked. Can ye drink of the cup that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And he said unto him, We can, we will, we must. Jesus said unto them, Ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of, and with the baptism that I am baptized with, shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give, but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. It shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. You see here, James and John came to the Lord Jesus and allow us that one will sit here, the other one will sit on the other side in your kingdom. And Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking about. That's something great. So that's something beyond even me, Christ, to give unto you. Are you able to drink the cup? What cup is that? 
do remember Gethsemane, if this cup of death will not pass me, except I drink it, that will be done. It was a cup of death. And um, James said, yes, we will. Yes, we can. And John said, yes, we can. And yes, we will. And the Lord said, yes, you will drink that cup, the cup of death. And this is it here, that the fulfillment of the promise they had made, and the fulfillment of the prophecy that the Lord had given. That's the reason why the Lord allowed that. But let me tell you something. You see, you see Herod. Herod was thinking, I take away James, then I weaken the church. I take away Peter, then I weaken the church. Why? Because they were pillars. And when you take away the pillars of a building, the building is gone. But Herod did not know that you cannot fight against God and win. I said you cannot fight against God and win. He took James away. See what God does. See what God has done. I'm looking at chapter 12, verse 17. Chapter 12, verse 17 of Acts. Chapter 12, verse 17. But he beckoning unto them with the hand hold to hold their peace declared unto them how the Lord had brought him out of the prison and he said go and show this is unto tell me tell me out loud unto James and to the brethren and he departed and went into another place Herod Herod thought he was clever he killed one James and God said Herod look up there's another James. I'm raising up another James. The church will not never lack leadership. And when one workman is gone, the God of the work will raise up another. Look at this James that we find now. The one that replaced the James that had gone. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 15. And I'm reading here from verse 13. Acts chapter 15. We're reading from verse 13. And after they had held their peace. Tell me what follows. James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. You see, Herod thought, I'm going to destroy the church. I take, I take away one James, and God said, You won't do that. You can't destroy the church. Upon this rock I build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against that church. And so James rose up to replace the other James. And he said, Simeon has declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to this agree the words of the prophets as it is written. After this, I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, says the Lord, who doeth all these things known unto God are all his words from the, from, from the beginning of the earth. I want you to look at James chapter 1. James chapter 1, verse 1. James chapter 1, verse 1. This James that replaced the other James, here is the book, the epistle that God made him to write. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad greetings. So you will see that a God will not lack workers and um, a Herod could not overturn, upturn the work of the Lord. He killed that other James, but another James is here already. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 2. And because he saw that he pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. It pleased the Jews. There are people that in their lives, the only one they want to please, they want to please their neighbors. They want to please the sinners around them. They want to please society. They want to please a particular club. They want to please a particular class. They want to please their relatives. And they leave God aside. They do not please the Lord. And if you are like that, and all your effort is, you're, you're, you're a man pleaser. You're a woman pleaser. You're a society pleaser. You're like Herod. 
everything you do is to please somebody you don't even please yourself and you are not a man of your own mind you are not a woman of your mind there's no backbone and there's no strength and you're looking at people does this satisfy them do they smile at me do they approve of me if you're pleasing people like that your salvation will not be steady because anytime anybody threatens you you just want to please them the evil of pleasing men and not pleasing the Lord will not be upon us in Jesus name are you there give me a good amen, amen. we come to point number two now we come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 as we look at chapter 12 we're spoken about about James now we want to talk about Peter Let, let's look at it from verse 3 it says and because he saw it that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then verse 4, and when he had apprehended Peter, when he had arrested Peter, when he had taken him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter, that is after the Passover, to bring him forth to the people. Then it says, Peter therefore was kept in the prison, Peter therefore was kept in the prison, and but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Prayer was made for Peter. I want you to understand, no matter what man proposes or plans against you, the plan of God will prevail. No matter what your enemies or persecutors, what they propose against you, and they say, well, finish him. They cannot finish you. Well, we'll destroy him. They cannot destroy you. All those things, I believe in God. I believe the promises of God. I know that nothing will happen to me this year. We will see the end of that man, the end of that woman. No man, no woman on the face of this earth will see your end in Jesus' name. Your times are in the hands of the Lord. Your life is in the hands of the Lord. Commit yourself unto the Lord and he will bring good things to pass in all your lives in Jesus' name. As, as you understand then that your times are in the hands of the Lord. Look at this verse of scripture, Psalm 31. Psalm 31. I'm reading from verse 15. Psalm 31, reading from verse 15. My times are in thine hands. This year, this year is in the hand of the Lord for you. My times are in thine hand. You see, Peter, when Peter was arrested, all the Jews were hoping and they were thinking, uh huh, James is gone. This one too is going to go. My times are in that. Deliver me from the hands of mine enemies and from them that persecute me. And that could have been the prayer of this Peter that my time is in the hand of the Lord and then the whole church the whole church was praying for him and and that is uh, the evidence of fellowship that's the evidence of love It's the evidence of compassion It's the evidence of will belong to the body if one member suffers the whole body will suffer with him and they uh, don't hide yourself that's why we have house fellowship in our church house caring fellowship means when any member is uh, having problem the rest of us in the house fellowship will know and then we'll take time apart to pray and those of us who just uh, came as well those who came to the lord in this uh, church in this uh, weekend revival we need to know that you are part of a family don't hide yourself from us and don't hide your problem from the rest of the people because as peter was in the prison the whole church was praying for him and god will answer our prayers I said, God will answer our prayers. Uh, notice five things here. Look at verse 5. Peter, therefore, was kept in the prison, but prayer was made. Prayer. Not politics. Prayer. Not human wisdom. Prayer. Not fighting. Prayer. Not rioting. Prayer. Not debate. Prayer. Number one, when any problem happens in our lives, we understand it's not crime, it's not worry, it's not anxiety, it's not politics, it's not fighting, it's not routing. It is, what is it? Prayer. And God still answers prayer. And then he says, prayer was made, number two, without ceasing, without ceasing. They kept on praying, kept on praying, kept on praying. It appeared 
tomorrow is when Herod is going to take this man. And they didn't say, it is too late now. There's no need of praying anymore. We're going to give up. They kept on praying, importunity, perseverance, persistence in prayer. And then it says of the church, number three, it's of the church. It's not just Peter praying, but the whole church uniting together. Because where two or three are gathered in my name, there I will be in their midst. And if any two of you shall agree as touching anything that you ask, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. And then number four, unto God. Unto God. The, the direction of our prayer matters a lot. It's not just that I'm praying. What are you praying about? We're praying unto God. You quote the promises of God. You know the prophecy of God. And you know the, uh, the preservation, the covenant of the Lord. And then it says, for him specific and very definite so when we pray it's a very definite thing we have an object we have a reason and we have the person we're targeting the prayer on and so number one prayer was made number two they made that prayer without ceasing number three it was the whole church doing the prayer number four they were praying unto god number five and the prayer was made for him we're looking at first thessalonians chapter five First Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 17. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray without ceasing. That's what they did. Pray without ceasing. Anybody sick in your family, pray God will heal him. Anybody having a terrible challenge in the church, pray God will answer. And as we as a church, we bind ourselves together in faith. And we're praying for such people, the Lord will answer the prayer in Jesus' name. I'm coming now to point number three now. Sinner's punishment. Sinner's punishment and the prevalence of preaching. Sinner's punishment and the prevalence of preaching. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. I'm reading here from verse uh, from verse 18. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir in, among the soldiers. What was become of Peter? And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he examined the keepers and uh, commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. We say that's surprising. How could God allow that? That these soldiers that were keeping Peter and eventually because they couldn't find Peter, then the Herod determined that they would be killed. And they were killed. Uh, many people don't understand why God does what he does. Now you remember, the children of Israel, they were in Egypt. And Pharaoh said, any of you midwives, Egyptians, that see these pregnant women, Israelites, whenever they deliver a baby boy, kill that boy. But we're told of two of the midwives that they will not carry out the edict of Pharaoh because they feared God. And the Lord says, the Lord blessed them. But you know, the rest of the people that anytime they saw an Israelite that was pregnant, where is he? Where is he going to deliver? When is she going to deliver? And, and if they took that child and threw in the river, that's the reason why they are first born later. That's why they all died. Because of what they had done against the children of Israel. Look at Obadiah. Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah chapter 1. Obadiah that's uh, near the end of the Old Testament, Obadiah, chapter 1. It has actually only one chapter, Obadiah. If you just uh, open, uh, you'll find the Obadiah is just before Jonah. Obadiah, are you there? You know Bible more than I thought. Wonderful. Obadiah, chapter 1. Let me read from verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be caught off forever. 
in the day that thou strewedest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away, captured his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. You see, the people of God in Jerusalem, they were going through turbulent time, troublous time terrible time and these people they were rejoicing look at this but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of judah in the day of their destruction you should not have rejoiced. You see those soldiers, when they imprisoned Peter, and he said, keep this man in their heart, uh -huh, uh -huh. you know, Jesus, you know, how to preach, you know, how to say Jesus away. They were happy that they brought a Peter into the prison, that now we have authority over this Peter, and he's chained with us, and we're keeping him, we're keeping him for death. They were rejoicing, and that's the reason why the Lord allowed judgment to come on. Then look at verse, look at uh, verse, uh, the latter part of verse 12 neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity yea thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity uh, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the causeway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in, in, remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. Because these soldiers rejoiced in the imprisonment of Peter. And they rejoiced the fact that Peter was going to die. When Peter now escaped, what they thought they wanted to happen to Peter, that is why it happened unto them. I pray that bad things will not happen to you. And when things happen to other people, you will not rejoice that bad things have happened to another person. And then when everybody is praying for Peter, say, no, I will not pray. I will not pray. Let you let it happen to him. Let it teach him a lesson. When God delivers that Peter, you'll be surprised. The bad things you are thinking should have happened to Peter will happen to such a person. I pray it will not happen to you. Let's come now to, let's come to verse 20. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Acts chapter 12. I'm reading here here from verse 20. Acts chapter 12, verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with, the, with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him, and having made Blastos the king's chamberlain, their friend desired peace, and uh, be before it says, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a said day, Herod, arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout, saying, It is the voice of a God and not of a man. They flattered him. They said, This is not man talking. This is God talking. Look at verse 23. And immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory and he was eating of worms and gave up the ghost because of his pride. We'll come back to finish up now. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12 and we're now reading verse 24. Acts of the Apostles chapter 12. We're looking at verse 24. In verse 24 it says, Acts 12, 24, and the word of God grew and multiplied. And the word of God grew and multiplied. What does that mean? When it says the word of God grew and multiplied. Well, to start with, that's what Herod wanted to destroy. That's what Herod wanted to stop. He didn't want the word to be going on in the hearts of people. And people believing the word of God. But after Herod died... All the things that stand in your world will die off. 
all the things that stand in the way of the calling of God for your life. The Lord will take everything away in Jesus' name. Everywhere they heard the word, wonders were taking place. Everywhere they preached the word, wonders were taking place. That's what it means when it says, and the word grew and multiplied. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry. When they had fulfilled their ministry. When they had fulfilled their ministry. I will fulfill my ministry. You'll fulfill your ministry. I want you to go back home with one word, fulfillment. Go back with one word, fulfillment. Every promise of God will be fulfilled in your life. The project and plan of God will be fulfilled in your life. And you will not leave that place until you have fulfilled your ministry in Jesus' name. This year for you will be a year of fulfillment. The year of the word. And the year of wonders in your life in Jesus' name. From tonight, those wonders will begin. Why don't you rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. See what we have learned. Meditate on the word that we have learned. And know that Herod does not have the final say in your life. And enemies do not have the final say in your life. There is a God in heaven who answers prayer. And there is power in the Lord. And the power of the Lord will roll away all those problems you have in Jesus' name. Look up to the Lord. This is the year of fulfillment. The year of fulfillment. The year of fulfillment. The year of fulfillment for you. You talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. It's the year of fulfillment. I thank you, Lord. It's it's a year of fulfillment. Talk to the Lord in prayer. I understand whatever happened to James, God understands. Whatever happened to James, God understands. You are not James. Your, your time is still there. And the plan of God is still for you. And the Lord is still going to fulfill his will in your life. You can rejoice. You can relax. You can rest. You can rest in the Lord and say, yes, Lord, I know. Yes, Lord, I know that the Lord is going to fulfill all his plans all his purpose, all his promise and he's going to fulfill with his power in my life he will do it, he will do it there's no anxiety, there's no room for anxiety there's no room for worry there's no room for sleeplessness because if you depend upon the promise of God the peace of God is there the peace that passes understanding will keep your soul and will keep your mind the peace that is deep like a river will keep your soul will keep your mind he that rest is mind on the Lord. You rest your mind on the Lord. You rest your mind in the Lord. And because you are resting your mind in the Lord, great will be your peace. Great will be your peace. No more anxiety. No more anxiety. You rest in hope. You rest in faith. You know that the Lord is on your side. The power of the Lord is on your side. No evil will come upon you. No calamity will come upon you. The promises of God are yes and amen. And like Peter rested, like Peter slept, so you will rest and so you will sleep at the right time. Doctor's report will not frighten you. Enemies will not frighten you. Sickness will not frighten you. Calamity will not frighten you. Pain will not frighten you. And the threat of Herod, the threat of Herod, the threat of Herod, the threat of enemies will not frighten you. The actions of those schemers, of those corners, of those coffers will not threaten you. Your life is safe and your life is secured in the hands of the Lord. And as we pray, you remember the church continued to pray. Peter was kept in prison and prayer was made. Prayer was made without ceasing unto God for him without ceasing don't stop without ceasing don't stop without ceasing prayer was made of the church for him and God answered God is answering your prayer and God answered God is answering your prayer and God answered God is answering your prayer and God answered if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we ask anything, anything, anything according to his will, he heareth us. You know he hears you. You know your prayers are answered. And so God sent an angel from heaven. God sent an angel from heaven. The angels are still there. 
the angels are still there. They minister to the heirs of salvation. They minister to the heirs of salvation. Those angels, they do minister. They do minister. And your angels do behold the face of our Father who is in heaven. They said, they said it's Peter's angel. They knew that an angel beside Peter, always watching, always watching, always taking care. You have an angel too. You have an angel too. He'll lift you up. He'll not allow you to dash your feet against the stone. Because he watches over you. God watches over you. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. There is nothing to fear. Because God is on your side. God is on your side. He'll see you through. And the angel tapped him. And then he rose up. He, bought, he put on his sandals. He put on his garment. And as they were going, all those iron doors opened. This year is a year of open door. This year is a year of open door. This year is a year of open door. Doors are opening before you. Doors of opportunity. Doors of prosperity. Doors of purity. And doors of holiness and doors of uh, progress and doors of success, doors of victory opening before you. No herald will put you behind the bar. No herald will put you in confinement. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. Doors are opening. No calamity this year. The doors are opening already. And eventually, all the soldiers that rejoiced at the incarceration of Peter, they lost their joy, they lost their lives. They thought Peter will die. What they thought, the negative thing they thought about Peter, that's what happened to them. Herod himself, Herod himself, before the end of the chapter, he was gone, he was gone. And uh, those uh, things against your life, before the end of the year, they are gone. And then the word grew and multiplied. The power of the word grew and multiplied. The preaching of the word grew and multiplied. The practice of the word grew and multiplied. The people of the word grew and multiplied. The performance of the word grew and multiplied. The places of preaching the word grew and multiplied. The prominence of the world in your life, in your family, growing and multiplying. The prevalence of the world growing and multiplying in your life. Let the world grow. Let the world grow in your life. Let the worship grow in your life. Let the witnessing grow in your life. Let the willingness grow in your life. Let the wonders grow in your life. This is the year, the year of the world, the year of wonders, the year of the world, the year of wonders, the year of the world, the year of wonders. Remember the central word in your life this year, fulfillment, fulfillment, fulfillment. Barnabas and Saul fulfilled their ministry. The year of fulfillment has come for you. The year of fulfillment has come for you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the fulfilled children of God said, The unconquerable children of God said, This year is your year. The year of your victory, the year of your power, and the year of wonders in your life in Jesus' name. This year, no worry, no anxiety. Wonder, signs, and power in your life. You drop all the sicknesses behind. Calamity, drop it behind. Herod, drop him behind. All those soldiers that feel that they're looking for your death, forget about them. You will have the victory. What are the victorious people there? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. The victory in your word, give unto them in Jesus' name.
all the plans of Herod against anyone here, all the plans of Haman against anyone here, all the plans of Nebuchadnezzar against anybody here, all the plans of the devil against anyone here, we cancel it. Lord, there's no anxiety anymore. There's no worry anymore. We're going with confidence, with faith, with trust, and with peace of mind in Jesus' name. Nothing coming from Herod will terrify any of us. Nothing coming from the enemy will terrify any of us. I pray, Lord, every negative thing you break away from the life of every child of God here in Jesus' name. All your chains fall down in Jesus' name. All bad luck, calamity, yoke, evil, any curse, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray this year will be a year of peace, a year of prosperity, a year of protection, a year of preservation, a year of the prevalence of the word in Jesus' name. I pray that your people, as they go back home, they go back home in victory. They go back home in joy. They go back home with answers to their prayers divine intervention after disciples intercession i pray that all the prayers who are prayed today and this weekend will be yes and amen on your life in jesus name you can now go with joy with victory with healing with deliverance and with prosperity for the rest of this year in jesus name Lord, I thank you because I know it is done. It's confirmed in every life in Jesus' name.